the Friday Mind Emission on the Toad Cam in New York Toad City on the third Toad from the Sun. Salvia Divinorum, Consciousness, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, Management Technology. Now that's going to be a stretch of the mind. Where do we bring all these concepts together in one great Friday fruit salad of thoughts? First of all, Terence McKenna, one of the um, original psychedelic intellectuals, I suppose you'd call him, one of the few, that regardless of how schizophrenic he probably was, he managed to maintain a degree of intellectual coherence on a subject. And McKenna made a very interesting point about the psychology of psychedelics and the benefit that um, other than, uh, other than a consensual consciousness experience had, although guys like McKenna, in my opinion, pushed it a little too hard, to way too hard. But McKenna made this observation. He said that uh, people who had experience with psychedelics showed a different psychology. There were some shifts in their psychology that were not simply shifts of intoxication or having uh, having one's brain rearranged temporarily, but long-term learning level shifts. So this would, this would be uh, what Gregory Bateson would be calling, say, second-order learning. Uh, you know, first-order learnings are, okay, I'm having this amazing psychedelic experience and this is rearranging my experience in, in particular ways, my senses, my thoughts, and um, there are certain learnings that I can get directly from that. Bateson's idea of the second-order learning was a learning of what inferences, what, uh, what logical leaps or inferences or chunkings up did you get from your psychedelic experience? What, uh, what were these examples of? So if you have novel experiences, your brain is also starting to generate categories, okay? A specific novel experience. Like when I saw the uh, World Trade Center collapse right in front of my eyes, that also generated an entirely new category of that sort of experience. Previously, there was nothing to put that experience in. There was no category to fit it into. And I think if people use psychedelics conservatively and wisely, they also begin to create new categories of experience. Um, so McKenna's point was that um, people who did have experience with psychedelics tended to think uh, less in, proto in stereotypes and that sort of pre-psychedelic or non-psychedelic people often had a tendency, an unconscious tendency, a, a deeply ingrained unconscious tendency to think in terms of. Remember we had that other YouTube I put up on thinking in terms of. So here are people who think in terms of stereotypes or who have what we might call category bound thinking. Which means that the mind has a pre-existing and often unconscious, and this is a very interesting way of describing the unconscious mind, as the set of the unconscious category assignments or the boxes or the bins that you put stuff in. You know, do you put it in uh, box A or box B or box C or box D? And it's got to go either in A, B, C, or D, and it can only go in A, B, C, or D. Um, and, and people that are, are stuck in uh, stereotypic thinking, are, we might say are conservatives, in the kind of um, lamentable sense of the word conservative. Their conservatism, in a sense, forces them to assign experience and ideas uh, to pre-existing and uh, rigidly set up categories. So McKenna said the psychedelic mind, or the mind that it had some contact with the, the psychedelic alternate model or the alternate explanation of the world or the ultimate alternate epistemology tended to be less stereotypic in that sense that it tended to feel less of an unconscious but powerful emotional drive to assign and to need to assign experiences, ideas, um, identities, etc. To, to very specific and often to overly specific and over, overly defined or in some terms, they, in some words, they, overdetermined is something that comes up in some social theories. The ideas become overdetermined, they become overly fit to certain points. 
where the psychedelic experience would allow for a loosening of that and a, a reduction of stereotypic thinking and the ability to simply encounter or discover things um, in the moment as they were. Like someone said about the great Russian writer Tolstoy, was that Tolstoy had the capacity to describe things as if he were seeing them for the first time, which is another way of saying uh, Tolstoy had a way of describing things as if he had no pre-existing categories. He was just seeing them as they were in the moment, which is very much what, what psychedelic consciousness is like, is, is kind of like you're removing these categories of assignment and you're just kind of seeing things for the first time as they are, as, as, as newly presented, newly known experiences before they just go into this kind of drudgery of it's an A, it's a B, it's a C, it's a D. So I'm in this internet discussion with a guy and I'm uh, relaying some, um, I, I thought very interesting personal, uh, personal history of mine uh, to this group. And he, he immediately squeezes it down. He immediately, and, he, and he's a very self-identified conservative. You know, he's he very, very proud of his conservatism and he thinks his conservatism is you know, a, a sort of very badge of identity. So he's got sort of wearing the conservative badge. And so it, he tries to summarize the whole thing. I suspect this guy's a, a, an attorney. He thinks like an attorney and the lawyers think this way. It's, he, so he immediately puts it in this very, it's got to be like box C. What you're talking about is what you're really saying. All this stuff you're saying is which is a very complex and rich and multi-dimensional discussion. That's box C. And I could see his mind taking all that stuff and saying, oh, all, what you're really saying is, is box C. And maybe uh, what we're really saying is, you know, box A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, F, you know, off into the Greek alphabet and the Hebrew alphabet. And, you know, but for him, it's box C. So I thought, what is a really, really useful um, useful NLP type uh, challenge uh, when people say well that's a that's a box C or you know that is of no practical use or something like that is typically to return to sequence thinking and not to box box assignment thinking so you would say um, what is the sequence that we have to follow to get to point D um, someone says uh, well you know that's not practical and you might say well what is the sequence of events or the sequence of discoveries or the chain of learning that we have to follow so it does become practical. So you find another box or a container or assignment. So I've found that either or thinkers or box assignment thinkers or people who have sort of a constrictive or what we call a, um, um, a, a narrowing type of thought, thinking down to a point, a convergent thinker, a very, very useful, and I, I recommend using this a lot, think when, you, when people are talking about things, say, what is, what is the sequence of thoughts? Or what is the sequence of mental activities or the, um, you, you might come up with some other metaphor that led you to think that, and what is an alternative sequence of thoughts that would allow us to get to another point on the map. So you don't just say, well, let's go to another point on the map, but you say, well, what are all the little towns on the road between big city A and big city B, and what do you have to do to get from little town A to little town B to little town C to little town D to little town E, and you know how much gas do you need, et cetera. So my advice is to get, get away from this kind of, um, kind of naughty conservatism is to ask about sequences and ask people inquire and discover how they internally sequence events and they're typically going not to be very conscious of that. So I want all you all you toad fans out there to ask people about their sequences and think about your own sequences and don't just say it's an A or it's a B. Say what is the sequence of thought processes or what is the sequence of thinking that you follow to, uh, to get you to that point. So ask people about their sequences, their chains, their, uh, their, the way the thoughts are linked up and the way the little sort of intermediate thoughts are linked up.